Sounds great. Well, I think we can we can get started. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Joel Shapiro. I'm one of the founders here at Dumpling. Um, obviously, want to thank you guys all for for taking the time to join us for this really important and timely uh, event. Uh, obviously, the last couple of weeks have been pretty crazy for all of us, uh, and specifically, you know, our entire team has been blown away by the work that that you guys are doing as grocery delivery professionals uh, amidst quite a bit of chaos, um, crowded stores. Um, customers that are you know demanding different things obviously a huge increase in the workload uh, it's just been really impressive to see the work that you guys are doing supporting um, vulnerable communities um, near you and, and also just continuing to be an essential part of, uh, of delivering food to people so just want to say thank you very much um, and at the same time want to acknowledge that you guys are on the front lines during some pretty crazy stuff. Um, and there have been a lot of questions that are going on in the group and um, that you guys have been asking about how best to really protect yourselves and take the, the proper safety precautions uh, to, to keep yourselves, your families, um, and your clients safe while doing grocery delivery. So um, we could think of no better way to answer those questions than to bring an actual expert uh, in to speak to the group and to be able to answer questions. So we're uh, incredibly excited um, and honored to have uh, Professor Ben Chapman from North Carolina State join us. Um, so I'm just gonna speak a little bit uh, about his credentials, which I could go on and on for, uh, but really, uh, so he is a food safety specialist in the Agriculture and Human Services Department at North Carolina State. So he spent his entire career focusing on this exact subject. And I think to say, Ben, that you are highly sought after uh, right now to speak on this subject would be an understatement. I think you've done like 100 interviews over the, the last week covering CNN, NPR, Wall Street Journal, um, and just really sought after. So we're really lucky to, to have you speak. and. Um, so I think I'm going to turn it over to you at the end. We'll make sure you guys uh, to ask questions. I'll be monitoring that and making sure. So we'll have time for Q&A at the end. Um, and at the same time, Professor Chapman has prepared a, a bunch of information to speak to. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to you and, uh, and let you take it away. Awesome. awesome. Thanks. Thanks so much, Joel. And b b before I get started, um, too much, Joel, you might have your mic on. It's maybe a little echoey. Okay. Um, Perfect. Um, before I get uh, too started, too far into it, I, I do also want to echo, echo Joel's comments. I think that um, one of the things that um, that I've really been focusing on over the last couple of weeks has really uh, is really about reducing the amount of people that are interacting with each other, obviously around social social distancing. And what what each of you as business owners do is really important to that. It's really um, uh, you're you're providing a service that that really is. Not only something that I'm so, uh, um, really um, suggesting and, and giving advice around, but many others in public health are as a way to really reduce the likelihood that that people are transferring the virus. And um, when Joel reached out to me earlier this week, I was quite excited to to talk to you just about the types of questions I've been getting um, from. Uh, from it, it, you know, normal people that are going grocery shopping, uh, from journalists about um, sort of risks associated with with shopping and and delivery and packaging and food, um, and so I you know, I I want to take maybe uh, five or six minutes just sort of laying out some of the things that that I've seen um, that I want to talk about some best practices, and then as Joel mentioned, what we're really here about today is is answering your questions um, and. Uh, that's that's what I'm uh, also you're excited to to do is make sure that I can get you the the best uh, food safety um, and public health information um, that's that's available right now. So first, I, I guess the first thing that I want to do is sort of see that say that as I think about what you do as uh, business owners in shopping and delivery, I see sort of three phases of of your of your business. Where we, we need to take care around um, COVID-19. And so that's one is just the entry into the into the grocery store, entry into a business, um, the the shopping aspect and, and sort of focusing there. 
first. Um, and then the other two being transport and, and delivery, but I'll, I'll come to those um, as we go along. So on the shopping side of things, um, the, one of the biggest things that, that I can suggest is really, um, you know, I've had this, this question about um, how the virus moves and, and you've heard a lot about hand washing and I want you to focus on your hands um, as, as this like uh, way that, that we're gonna have virus transmission. Um, but I don't want you to think about, um, you know, I, I don't want you to, to say, okay, I have to use gloves or if I can't use gloves, it's gonna be risky. Hand washing and hand sanitizer is an, a, an excellent way to protect you and pr to protect uh, the transmission of, of the virus. Gloves, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not going to say that gloves don't have a role. Um, they do. I think we need to be in a situation where we're preserving gloves, though, as much as we can for healthcare professionals. Um, if you do have gloves and you're using them, uh, I think that's fine. But we have to remember that just because you have gloves on doesn't mean that you can't still pick up the virus with that with your gloves. So if you're touching your face with gloves on, it's the same as um, touching your face with unwashed unwashed hands. So I, I, I wouldn't suggest gloves versus no gloves. I think it's it's kind of a wash um, either either way. Um, so using hand sanitizer, um, which I know, believe me, I, I'm very aware just the, un, the unavailability of hand sanitizer. Um, Joel shared uh, with me just you know, the um, suggestion of being able to, since you're out there, being able to grab sanitizer in, uh, in shopping uh, situations. I think that's a, a phenomenal um, uh, you know, situation for you to be in. But if you can't get sanitizer, hand washing with soap is, is equally as effective. It's, in this case, we're really looking at and or hand sanitizer. It's not either, either or. Um, both of them together are great. One or the other, also great. They're, you're gonna do a, a lot of um, good, good work um, in that case. Um, one thing that I've noticed as I've gone to grocery stores, and, and believe me, I'm not nearly in the same amount of grocery stores as you are, so this is just from me as a, as a shopper. Um, one thing I've noticed is certain stores are, are I, I have the availability of a cart or a uh, basket um, wipe, and in other stores, I don't have that, that ability. And so I look at those, those cart um, bars, those, those cart handles as uh, a potential source for you to pick up virus. And so using those wipes is, is an excellent uh, situation, um, e excellent practice uh, to do. But again, planning for that is, is another uh, piece as I think about what you do as business owners, having, you know, knowing that you might be going to a store that doesn't have um, those wipes, maybe that's a place that you wanna use wipes that, um, uh, that, you, that you do have. Um, uh, and, the talking about wipes, um, and I think we can probably post in the Facebook page later about this, but there is a list um, that uh, CDC has, and actually I can, I'll put it into the chat right now for you to take a look at, but there's a list that um, CDC links to, it's from EPA, about specific disinfectants that are, um, uh, a, that, that, do, that are effective against coronavirus. Um, and so uh, this list has right as of right now, um, 200 and oh, sorry, 351 different products on it that we know that there's science uh, behind. And uh, these many of these are things that um, it, that I see at grocery stores, and many of them are not They're things that I would see in restaurant um, settings or um, uh, restaurant supply stores. So you want to check to make sure if you are using wipes that there are that it's 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 a product that's on this list because these are the ones that are most effective um, for um, uh, for uh, uh, the the um, inactivation specifically of uh, of coronavirus. Um, so. Uh, thinking about you know my shopping process, I'm walking in, cleaning off my cart handle. I'm being really careful on what it is I'm touching. I really want to make sure that I'm only touching the things that I'm grabbing. Uh, so so I'm not facilitating the movement of virus from product to product or from package to package. Even though, and this is something that I kind of forgot to mention right at the top of the um, this discussion, but we have not identified food or food packages as 
a transmission source for coronavirus, for COVID-19. And I think that's the most important thing to think about. The things that are the highest risk for um, uh, getting coronavirus are being around people who are infected and are really number one, showing symptoms, coughing, sneezing. There, there, um, there is a risk about around being around people who are not showing symptoms that may be carrying the virus, that are infected with it. Um, and so that's why we're suggesting social distancing and all sort of public health. But the number one thing, it's not food, it's not food packaging, it's not even really carts um, or, or um, like the common use utensils or tongs. If you see those at hot bars at grocery stores, I think they're almost pretty much eliminated at this point. Um, but even those are theoretical risks, things that I, I would want to pay attention to, but the number one thing is being uh, you know, around people. So that, you know, thinking about protecting yourself as a shopper, as a business owner, as you're walking around a grocery store, really respecting that social distancing. Um, one of the things that I've also seen in grocery stores recently is, um, is social distancing in checkout. So um, either using um, uh, uh, self-checkout uh, lanes, or if you are working with a cashier, just being mindful of how close you are to that cashier and that you are handing over um, a credit card, some sort of transaction in, in many cases, that, that there is a potential for that transmission of virus through that card. So also being aware of that, hand washing after handling that card, and I would suggest disinfecting it um, as well, especially in, in your business where you're doing that multiple times uh, over and over again, you're at a, um, your, your exposure chances is, is, is a little bit higher than me is just as one shopper um, in, a, in a four or five day uh, period. I would really pay attention uh, to, those, to that transaction um, as well. So, so as I leave, and you know, sort of going into the second phase of of what I, um, you know, what I see in, in what your business is all about, um, I'm now going into transport. I'm going into my vehicle. I'm thinking about what am I going to touch um, uh, as well. So in my vehicle, I'm I'm paying attention to um, using a disinfectant on. Um, on my steering wheel, on my seatbelt, just making sure that if I forget to wash my hands or use sanitizer as I re-enter my vehicle, that I'm also breaking that mode of transmission. One thing that Joel and I talked about earlier this week that I also want to highlight is um, thinking about the number of pickups and uh, you know the uh, and drop-offs that you're doing in uh, you know in in the course of a day, just where you are placing those bags and those packages that you're going to take to your clients, making sure that you have a place that you can put it that doesn't lead to the potential movement of, uh, of the virus. And so my suggestion on that would be really just to get a very thin poly, uh, uh, like polyplastic sheet that you can put down, that you can get it at a, at a hardware store um, that you're either using for, you know, you could put your disinfectant on that to, to wipe it down uh, and disinfect at the end of the night, or if it's a really thin one, just re replacing it every day so you're not facilitating any of the transmission of, of the virus. This is also something, um, as Joel and I kind of talked, talked about it, that you can kind of communicate with, with, your, with your clients about this is what we're doing um, to make sure that we're not being a source of, uh, of virus. Um, so in your car, cleaning and sanitizing your hands as you enter, um, keeping, I, I've actually, and I'll, I'll put a link to this um, as well. We, we have um, a uh, page where we put together a bunch of fact sheets at NC State University, including a link on how to make your own do-it-yourself uh, hand sanitizer. Um, and there, there's been a lot of different I'll throw this into the chat. Um, there's been a lot of different things sort of floating around about homemade hand sanitizer. What, what we did is work uh, with a recipe that um, WHO has that has science around it that we know is the most effective uh, out there. And it's really um, hydrogen peroxide, glycerin, and alcohol. Um, and, and in a specific uh, uh, ratios. So I'll, I'll let you take a look at that. But if you can't get sanitizer, this is what I've been using um, in my home. And then also what I'm spraying down my, um, uh, my steering wheel and my seatbelt with. Yep. Real quick question. So Ashley, Ashley asked, she said, um, 
we have some stores that are too crowded, even in Washington, uh, to do social distancing or where other customers or shoppers are not respecting kind of the six foot space. Uh, is there anything we can do after someone is in your space or touches you? It's, it, yeah, this is a real this is a real tough one, but I but I think a very practical question. This is something that that you're dealing with. The amount of time that you're out there and that you might be bumping into people, like that, would be the thing that I would worry about the most. I would um, when I'm when I'm home, I would make sure that I'm laundering my clothes sort of right away, like that, you know, sort of breaking that risk. But then also very much being mindful of uh, of my my hand washing. The the biggest risk is someone coughing or sneezing around you, um, and that's something that um, that that obviously we don't have a whole lot of control against or, or around. But doing your best to maneuver around people and not you know. Uh, dwelling around others really um, for a long time is is my my best suggestion. But I think that this is a real. Um, it, I, I don't I don't feel like I have a great answer for you on that, Ashley. I think it's a real concern. Um, but but it's really like something that that I think working with grocery stores. This is something that I'm doing sort of on the other side of of what my job is working with grocery stores to help that limit number of people that are in there, um, and then also really encouraging. Um, grocery stores to actively ask people who are who have uh, symptoms to not show up uh, into into their um, system is is one thing. But yeah, I, I wish I had a better answer for you. But it, it's a it's a it's a concern. It's it's a great question. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, I guess the the last piece that I that I want to um, you know sort of as I think about your business um, that I want to want to highlight, and then we can open this up for for a while and a free for all for, for questions is the, is that delivery and drop off. And so, um, as you're serving lots of different populations and I know just by um, reading through the Facebook group over the last couple of days, many of you are, are interacting with vulnerable populations, um, and you know, high risk groups, elderly individuals. Um, that's why they're coming to you, right? Is, is really, so they're not in those grocery store settings, really, really, really doing what you can to, um, reduce any interaction you're having with people um, is something that I would encourage you to do. That, that you know, whether that be touchless um, and dropping off, sort of texting, taking pictures of the items that you're leaving on someone's doorstep or in front of their door, just letting them know that you're there, that you're having this conversation, interaction, but not actually face to face, that limits not only your exposure to someone who, and this was a question that, that came up right at the start. How do, what should I do if I'm, uh, how should I approach a delivery to a diagnosed COVID-19 customer? My, my suggestion is to limit that interaction as much as possible. So your conversation is really only happening electronically um, as, much as, as much as you can. That you're not there sort of ringing a doorbell, opening up a door, um, you know, as you're getting uh, uh, goods to people that you're not uh, picking up any virus and you're not transmitting any virus. Now, in certain cases, this is a really, um, you know, it's a difficult situation because you've built this relationship with some of your clients. And I, I understand that. I mean, I know as Joel and I talked back and forth about this, something that we really want to focus on. Um, we really want to make sure that, that you're, um, being mindful of this, and then also, if if you can't limit that, hand washing, hand sanitizing uh, would be my my suggestion. Um, my last thing, uh, because it's a question that comes up a lot, is around reusable grocery bags. And again, this is something that I think, you know, understanding a little bit about your business, many of you may be using someone's reusable grocery bags. You may be using your own reusable grocery bags. You might exist in a jurisdiction that requires you to use a reusable grocery bag. Um, it, I, it, there, there, we don't have any. Uh, suggestions that there are risks about reusable grocery bags, but a practical and logistical situation is how do you clean and, and sanitize and disinfect those bags between use, which would be what our best practice would be. So in certain cases, you may want to go back to plastic or, um, or, or paper bags for the time being um, because of the practicality of it. Uh, but if you are using reusable or um, you don't want to be in a situation where you are now like having to interact with that you know, with that individual and placing it into their bags or into a box or with them and handing it to them um, in, in their setting. So it's, it's one that just be mindful of. Um, yes, uh, I can, 
ta and tackle Chris, uh, Christopher Barnes's uh, question here. Um, I have a daughter who's in a high risk group. What can I do to protect myself so I don't get sick and therefore um, get my daughter sick? Is it better to take a break from shopping at this time? Man, that is a very, that's a very tough, tough question um, uh, for, for me to, to answer because I, I realize that this is absolutely part of your, part of what you're doing is part of your living. And I don't want to get into a, a situation of, of sort of saying, yeah, this isn't something you should do. I think being mindful and reducing how much you are around people as much as possible. And then in your home, really, really focusing around hand washing, um, laundering your clothes when you, when you come in, uh, breaking that mode of transmission of what's happening outside of your home as much as possible, um, and, and being, uh, being aware uh, of, of where your hands are, where, where your clothes are, would be my, my, my best recommendation. And, and, um, you know, Christopher, I, I, you know, best, best wishes. It's a, it's a really tough position for, for you to be in. So Ben, just real quickly, just want to kind of uh, off what you were saying there. So just kind of at this point, then kind of whatever the situation, the recommendation would be if you're, when, when people are doing delivery, we should, we should not be knocking on doors, not handing it and, and really just being a drop off with, with no contact whatsoever. That yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's the best practice right now. Um, and, and two months from now, that might change. Um, we, we may be in, into a different situation, but at least with the uncertainty of where infections are right now, um, to, to me that I, I think anything that we can do to go to touchless and interactionless not only protects you as the business owner, but it protects your clients as well, that you're not a transmission vehicle and they're not a transmission vehicle. Absolutely. That's and that's, and that's something just for our business owners that are watching, that's something that we can help out with, uh, with messages and, and templates that you can use to set that expectation. If it feels weird, or maybe you're not sure how your customers will do it, but we can, we can help make that really easy and, um, and just kind of set the stage to allow you to kind of protect yourselves and protect your clients uh, through that. Yep. Um, so there's a couple of questions I can tackle these. We also use reusable coolers. What's the time frame that frozen or refrigerated foods can go without, uh, without those bags for the time being? This is really in my wheelhouse of what I do every day, not in COVID-19. When it comes to frozen foods, what we're really worried about is, and, and this is sort of across the board, any foods that can promote the growth of bacteria, um, we're looking at four hours. So as long as there's still ice crystals in that food, I know for sure that it's been well below um, 32 degrees. And so that's, that's what I'm looking at from a visual. Um, and so uh, that, you know, for me, uh, that, that, that's what I'm trying to do uh, from, from a, a reusable cooler standpoint. Um, the one thing that you can do with those reusable coolers is use that same disinfectant that we're talking about in between deliveries um, as well. So obviously you're doing, you know, picking up maybe multiple things and dropping off multiple things. But if you're trying to make a clean break between three or four or five different clients to, to take some time to spray down and use disinfectant on those reusable coolers, I think that's also a very good practice. That's not something that we would typically do, but that that's protective. And again, all of this is like trying to take a very, very low risk around packaging down an extra step to even lower. So we haven't, at, you know, at this point, um, we, we don't really have any indication that that anything of what, what you're doing with your business is even uh, a likelihood to transmit risk. We just want to be even furtherly protected. All right. So I got a couple of questions that I gathered from the group before this started. Um, so this one is from Sarah in New York. Are gloves and masks recommended while shopping and delivering and does wearing them help lessen our risk? So I already tackled the gloves, uh, but I didn't, and I'm glad you asked the question about masks because I, I didn't tackle that. So to reiterate on gloves, uh, gloves or clean hands, clean and sanitized hands, I think are both fine. Um, in a situation, and I'll, I'll go back to the, the, in a situation where there isn't uh, a cart wipe available, gloves, if that gives me some mindfulness that I'm touching this um, cart, that I might be able to put virus on my hands that's protecting me, I would say that we can still transfer virus from those cart, carts with those gloves. So it's, you know, I want to make sure clean hands, clean gloves, clean and sanitized is, is what I would want. On masks, um, 
really CDC uh, Center for Disease Control has been very clear on masks on, on, on their end that we want to make sure that we are preserving masks for healthcare providers, just like we are with gloves. And the only masks that really have any efficacy that we would share in, um, in this case to protect individuals are the N95 respirators. So we don't want to be using those because that should go to healthcare, but also to actually fit them to your face and make a lock, it, you need a, a, some proper training to do that. And um, one of the things that I've shared this week, um, I've seen people wearing these N95 uh, respirators while they are shopping in a variety of wrong ways, like covering just their mouth and leaving their nose open, which it has no protection. The other thing that can be a problem if there's not a proper lock is if a virus does end up up underneath that mask, it actually can trap it in. So my suggestion on, on that question would be not, uh, my recommendation is not to use masks um, whatsoever and just being mindful of our hands. All right, um, so there's another question and you've touched upon this already, but i um, kind of curious actually. So, so when is the best time, this is from Ashley, to wash hands when shopping and delivering? Is there, are there any additionals we can take to lessen our risk? And then is there a projected timeline for things to return normal? So I'm wondering, you've talked about like when you touch and after, but is there like in between, you know, touching or like yeah. at what points would be good to, to wash hands? I, I, it's really, it, it, this is one where a practical situation comes up, right? So, so the recommendation would be like, every time I'm touching something, I should wash my hands. Well, realistically, that's not possible. I would suggest that the most important times to wash hands, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not worried almost at all about packaging, like sort of like in between things that are packaged. But if I am going and touching raw produce that is not going to be cooked, thinking about like heads of lettuce, bulk, um, uh, bulk apples, uh, and I'm placing those in bags. I, I really want to do my best. And this is not just like for COVID-19. I want to do my best in all of my time that I'm shopping to make sure that I'm, I'm make, my hands are clean and sanitized anytime I'm touching something that someone else is going to eat right away. So if I'm in the produce section and I'm grabbing those those bulk products that are that I'm bagging, I would clean and sanitize my hands before I do that. So I might plan a little bit about what I'm doing in the store, right? Like I'm going to do probably that first um, in in my in my um, uh, thought process. I'm gonna I know that as I enter, I'm using the wipes, I'm sanitizing as I come in. My hands are clean. I'm not touching anything, and then I'm gonna do that um, that that produce, and then I might go to the other parts of the store. Um, I, afterwards. Uh, and then really, this is a food safety thing more than COVID-19. I'm probably going to go to the meat section last, um, e either the raw meat section, because we do know that pathogens can exist from the meat on the outside of those packages through leakage. So, so I want to do all the things that are um, sort of the, the People are not going to cook, and then get to my riskiest thing at the end, which would be which be, would be meat. That's that's how I would plan it. Makes sense. Thank you. No problem. There's one one question from Vanessa. Um, it says she says she gets asked a lot. How do you ensure that you don't have it on you? I'm assuming it is uh, coronavirus. At coronavirus. This point. Yes. Oh man. Huh, that's the toughest question I've been asked, Vanessa. Uh, at, like yet. She's good um, at that. Yeah. So so I so so we don't. We I mean, uh, truthfully, not not to be um, you know to to really put my my scientist hat on. We we don't really know if we have it on it. All we can do is think about what are the transmission routes that are likely to put it on me, and that's that someone coughs, someone sneezes, someone spits while they're talking close to me. So that distance of six feet. I know that I'm going to really reduce my risk that those moisture droplets don't get to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm really focusing on the, the prevention side. Um, my hands, I, and actually I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my, my assumption now, as I go through my normal everyday life outside of my house, I assume that I do have it on me, that I, I do have it on my hands. That's why I'm washing my hands um, and really focusing on um, uh, you know, uh, on what I, what I can do um, ar ar around that. And, but, but I do see my hands as being the, the, um, the, the, the most likely place that I'm going to get it. So I, I see another question that's coming out um, right now from Kim about should we spray ourselves with Lysol after shopping? I would suggest no, 
I don't think that, that we have any situation that that would, that we know that that would be even be um, very protective. Um, but my hands and being around people are really the two things um, that, that I'm uh, uh, focusing on. Um, I, and I'll, I'll track, you know, track a couple of these questions right now. So what about asking our clients to wipe down items we deliver before they bring them into their homes? I also don't think that there's a lot of sense in doing that. I don't think that that's a very, um, it, it, it seems like a good idea, but what I'm trying to do in my home is conserve the sanitizer and disinfection that I do have because supply wise, it's hard to get. So my, what I would suggest to the clients, and we haven't actually talked about this, it's a great question from, uh, from Andrew. Um, I would suggest that you're telling your, your clients to wash your hands after they put away their groceries and after they, they take that in. That's really their best way to, tra to break this chain of tra transmission and knowing that it's unlikely that the virus is on that um, anyway in the, in the first place. Um, is bleach better for sanitizing bags and stuff versus Lysol from Michelle? No, um, it really, uh, both of those are equally as good. In fact, Lysol, if you look at the list that I put in um, to, the, to the chat box when you get a chance, um, uh, Lysol, Lysol disinfectant spray, Lysol uh, wipes are all on that list. So both are, are equally um, as good. Um, uh, and uh, I'm skipping, I think I'll make sure we haven't uh, gone over, uh, you know, missed too many, but Heather asks, uh, those who are using gloves, can you post proper removal? I'm uh, home, uh, in home health care, so I do have proper training, but it would be good to people know if they're using them. That's a great, um, great question. It's not something that we've developed yet, uh, but I believe that CDC has, and I can share with Joel um, uh, some material on that. But yes, uh, Heather brings up a really good point of, we're really trying to make sure that, that as you're removing gloves, and I'll kind of demonstrate the best I can, that we're taking it from the, you know, sort of the clean and, and trying to uh, turn it inside out and not putting our hands on, um, you know, on, on the outside that are my, my clean open hand um, and, and, and placing anything on my, on my hands. And after any glove removal, hand washing and hand sanitizing is still important. So it's not a, it's not a replacement for it. And so, um, but I, I'll be sure to, to send some information to, to Joel on that, that, that he can link, link to in the, um, in the Facebook page. Thanks. I think there was a question that um, we might have missed a little above. Sure. And I think it gets to the heart of the kind of the practicality. So in the practical finish with the meats. Um, yep. And in today's reality, this right. question is right now, those are actually the hardest to get. So you can imagine first uh, thing you're doing is yeah. you're going to get the meat so that, that you might be able to get them yes. for clients. And I um, think that's a great question. And I absolutely like in my normal everyday non like we're all fighting for me, um, then yeah, I, I think it's a great idea that if you're if that's the first place you're going to go, you're going to get the best selection. Um, sanitizing really well afterwards is absolutely a great step. Yeah, very, very good. Um, and there's another question about thoughts on taking temperature daily before shopping. And so, um, so this is, this is a really, a really tough one. I think I would fall with what the CDC, so this is um, from, uh, you know, uh, you know, fr uh, from Olivia. She's asking really about, is this a good idea that I go ahead and take my temperature to make sure that I don't have the fever? It's really not what CDC is suggesting. Um, uh, I, yet, really, they're looking for: Do you feel? Do you feel bad? Do you have the the symptoms? Knowing whether you're at ninety, you know, seven point nine versus um, ninety nine point nine or one hundred point one, which is very close to a low grade fever, without feeling any other symptoms, may or may not really tell you any information without knowing what you are all the time. That's really the, the piece that, that CDC has suggested. So it's a, it is part of the indication having a fever, but if you don't know what your baseline is, it's hard to say what, what that exact magic number is. Um, and so, so my suggestion would be very much keeping track of what you feel like, and then if you have any other symptoms, and then checking temperature, but doing that just um, uh, without that baseline may not tell you um, enough. Um, other qu other questions that were um, that we have missed. Here's one from Bree. Okay. Would you suggest trying to group orders to avoid multiple trips to the store? This can prolong the amount of time spent in the store, but seems like it could reduce the amount of transmission by not going to the store multiple times. Yeah, and it's this is one of those 
Um, in my world, we talk about risk, risk trade-offs. I don't think that, that either one of these is any riskier or less risky than, you know, um, than the other, because what you're really looking at is the total amount of time that you're around other people. So if grouping in order together um, can reduce that, then yes, then you know, go for that. But if, it's, if it nets out to be, you know what, I'm gonna be around the same amount of people over time, um, and I, you know, it's gonna be longer, it, it, it's, re it's really difficult to, for me to say that one's better than, than the other. It's really, um, it's really just reducing your amount of total time around other people. But, it's, but in some cases, um, to the question, it might be better to group it, and in other cases, it may not make a difference at all. We, I, I, do a, I do a podcast called Food Safety Talk, and on that podcast, we often say it's complicated and it depends. And this is an like a question where it's like, it's not so much complicated, but this one is like, it depends. Makes sense. Great. Uh, any, uh, any other questions? Well, and, and um, oh, yeah, sorry, this is one that I didn't answer before, but you did. When, I think, when do I think we'll be back to normal life? Man, this is like the, the million dollar question. Um, realistically, um, based on, and I, and I could talk about like, it, it's lo location to location, obviously. I'll, I'll talk about what I'm experiencing here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and then what I see right across the US. Um, I, I think we're, we're looking at here in Raleigh, um, based on where our curve is, and we're not really cer certain how quickly we're going to be able to slow this. Um, three, four months, um, realistically, of being in social distancing uh, world. I don't know what that means right across the U.S., um, but but I I don't think that that I, I don't have the same optimism that we will be back to work <laughs> nor as normal in two weeks from now or by the end of April. Um, I, I do really think that um, that this is, uh, depending on the healthcare situation in, our, in lots of locations, it's going to take us a while for us um, to manage this. Um, and and that's a, you know, not a great message always to hear, but but I think realistically we're looking at a few months. Yeah. And I think it I, I think it also speaks to just the importance too of of kind of the safety and the tips that you're sharing with everyone right now because more than likely this is going to be in the long haul and, and kind yep. of the better we can practice these, these um, precautions and these things, I think the better chance we all can do to uh, kind of prohibit the spread to ourselves and, and to clients. Yeah. And these are all good food safety things to do anyway. Like it's, I mean, this is one of those things that I know we're at the extreme because we're in the middle of this outbreak, but a lot of the things that we're talking about, hand washing, hand sanitizing, they're good things in handling other people's food all the time. Yeah. Um, I got a, mess, you know, a message from Kim about um, using uh, the reference to my name and credentials. Yep, absolutely. Um, you know, feel free to um, to mention anything that, that we talked about. And if any, if you, if anybody needs to get in contact with me, um, my, I, the website that I uh, included has my contact information on um, earlier on in the chat box. Uh, so feel free to get in contact with me, and I'll lurk around the Facebook page uh, <laughs> as well. And, and, and jump in and answer questions if, uh, if I feel like uh, I have the expertise to do so. Yeah, it's, it's great to have you in, in our uh, Facebook community. Really appreciate that. And um, if I can, I just take a stab at kind of some of the big things that uh, yeah. just to kind of reiterate that I heard. Um, so, one, when we go to the store, um, kind of bringing with us, if we can, uh, something to wipe down carts uh, and, um, and baskets. So, just wiping those down. I think, two, I heard. It's, it's really about keeping our distance from people. So that, that's kind of the, the highest chance of transmission. So the more we can keep that six feet and, um, and keep that distance, the, the better off we're gonna be. Uh, three is the importance of washing our hands more than anything. So whether it's gloves or personal protective, really it, that, it's not that much of a difference between just using our bare hands and then making sure that we're every time we're touching, whether it's a credit card or uh, unpacking groceries, when we have that chance really to wash our hands, uh, soap uh, and do that really well. Uh, and, and, I'll, I'll, and Joel on that, I'll say, and or sanitizer hand washing and, and in this case sanitizer is extremely effective so if you get if you can get it um and or make it uh yeah absolutely sorry to, yeah 
perfect. Thank you for that clarification. And then, and then lastly, I think something we should all strive to be doing is contactless delivery, uh, regardless of who the customer is. Um, I think the where we are today is that we're we're dropping stuff off at the front door at the garage and we're texting and saying it's there. Um, yep. And I'll I'll answer really quickly. There was just one more question about the three ingredients to make sanitizer. Um, so the link I put in the, in the box there takes you to the page that we designed, um, but it's hydrogen peroxide, glycerin, and um, isopropyl alcohol, so rubbing alcohol. alcohol. It needs to be above, at least 91% um, alcohol, and it is still uh, available. I've seen it at a grocery store recently, at pharmacies. Um, it's difficult to get, and I think it's going out quickly, but, but those three ingredients are, are out there. Oh, all right. Oh, I'm putting stuff in only to panelists, not to all. <laughs> that's okay. We'll, that's we'll why, take all of that's this. That's why stuff. people are like, I don't see the link. There's the link. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that everyone, uh, everyone gets the links and the information. We'll also have this video available uh, for people to see afterwards that weren't able to join us. So perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Professor Chapman, thank you so much. Can't tell you how much uh, it means to us uh, and how helpful this will be for everyone to keep doing the incredible jobs they're doing and protect themselves protect their clients, protect their families. So really appreciate this advice and, uh, and best practices. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to do it and, and best of luck. And, and like I said at the start, I really appreciate everything that, that you guys are doing because it's especially helping our vulnerable populations right now. And that's, that's very important. Thank you. All right. All Thanks right. a lot. See everyone later. Thank you. Bye.